Okay, studying people, are you ready for your exam three review problem number one? It looks to me like a centroid problem. It looks like uh, a 3D area and it's kind of wacky, isn't it? Okay, so this thing is like, imagine this made out of sheet metal or something and it comes out and then rolls over and then has a half round top on it. Okay, huh. I don't know what that would be. I don't know. But anyway, what is X bar, Y bar, and Z bar for that part? Okay. Now, first things first, okay. Do not, I mean, you've got to get used to this. But look here. There's two Ys. This is not right. This is X. <laughs> first things first, Hanson made another mistake. Okay. This is a different coordinate system than we're used to, okay. So don't get this confused because... Professors make tests, they get problems out of different textbooks, different authors have different coordinate systems. Don't let that confuse you, okay? So this time Z is coming out at you, Y is up, and this is X going this way. Okay, so just number one, just by observation, just by observation, I already know what X bar is. What? You're so smart. Not really, okay? In this direction here, right? in the X direction, I know that the centroid is going to be right in the middle, okay? Because on this side of my finger, everything looks exactly the same as it does on that side of my finger, right? So X bar I already know. And as a matter of fact, they didn't give me this dimension here, but they gave me that that's 125, so that means that's 125 and that's 125. That means this is 250, okay? So right off the bat, I got this. X bar is equal to 125. Okay, And you can put it in your table if you want. And if you don't get 125, that may be a, like a secret clue that says something's messed up. Okay, But that should be 125. I'm not going to do it. It'll make my table a little bit smaller. And I'm all for that, right? So I'm going to divide this up into parts. Okay, I'm going to call this piece number one. The little curvy do here is going to be piece number two. And then this little round up here at the top, piece number three. Now, you are going to need your centroid table in the back of your book to come up with these values. I kind of know what they are, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use my brain. But those, what I get for those centroid values are in that back table of your book. Okay, so here we go. Piece number, I'm going to use the table method. One, two, three. And I need Y and Z. I'm not including X because I already know it. Uh, A... Uh, what else did I talk about? Um, y, A, and Z, A. Okay. So there is my table. And I'm using areas because I'm, I'm, I have this, this thin 3D plate, if you will. And it's so thin that, that, that I don't know the thickness. So that, that I don't use volume, I'm going to use area instead. Which I'm just going to call it like, you know, infinitely thin like me <laughs> okay so here we go all we have to do is fill this table out no garbage in our table and we won't get a garbage answer which would be super -de duper -de cool okay y bar for shape number one okay so where is y bar for shape number one okay where is the center of that well y bar is actually half of 150 it's 75, right? If you think about it, 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 it it's going to lie on this line right here. There he is, right? And how far is that line from the XZ plane? Half of that, 75. Okay, what, what is, um, let's do Y bar for shape number, no, let's do Z bar. Z bar for shape number one, right? We're just going to fill up number one first. Okay, Z bar for shape number one. Okay, so here we go. If this is 80, then what? This is also 80, right? This is 80. Okay, because this is a radius here, okay? So if that back radius is 80, then the side is 80. So where is Z bar, okay? So if I look at this from the side, let's say I'm looking straight down the X axis at what I'm looking at here, okay? That shape would look like this. Okay, so what is Z bar for shape number one? 
okay? Well, here it is. So how far is that from here? How far out? Well, if this is 80, then this must be, similar triangles, must be 40, okay? So this is 40. And what is the area? The area of that is 250 times this line right there. And how long is that line? That line is 150 squared plus 80 squared square root. So it's that times 250. And that will give me the area of that plate. Let's see what that is. I have no idea. Okay. 150 squared plus 80 squared equals inverse square root of that is equal to 170. So the length of that line right there is 170. Okay, we might need that in a minute, I don't know. And I'm gonna multiply that by 250, so times 250 is 42,500. So that's 42,500, and that's millimeters squared, right? And then I can fill the rest of that out. So times 75 is 318, oh, it's a lot, 3,187,500. Don't be afraid of big numbers. They won't hurt you. 40 times 42,500 is uh, 17, how many zeros is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1.7 million there, huh? Okay, there's line number one for piece number one. Let's do piece number two. Now, piece number two is a little tricky, isn't it? Okay, so piece number two, what do we have here? In the y direction, okay, if I look straight at this picture again, here's y bar. What is y bar? How much is this to the centroid? Well, the centroid of that shape, that is, a, that is an arc, isn't it? Okay, that's an arc. And where is the centroid of an arc? It's at this distance here is 2r over pi. Again, where's that coming from? Look in the table in the back of the book under the arc, centroid of a, a quarter circle arc, and you'll see that centroid, right? That tells me the centroid is like right there. Okay, that arc is 80, so that's 2 times 80 divided by pi equals, so that's 50.93. So is that what I need to put in that box right there? No, 50.93 is just from here up to the centroid, right? So it's just that little bit there. I've got to add to that 150, because i got to go 150 to get up there, and then 50.93. So it's 200. 0.93, okay? What is Z bar, okay? Now Z bar is going this way, so Z bar is just this distance here, which also is 2R over pi. So that is 50.93, and I don't have to add anything to that, do I? So that's just plain old 50.93, and then the area of that is gonna be this quarter circle arc times the thickness, okay? So what's a quarter of a circle? Well, a whole circle is pi d. That's how I remember it, right? That's the whole circumference of a circle. So pi, or, or you can say two pi r, right? Same thing. And then we're gonna divide that by four, right? So pi r over two, which is pi times 80 equals, divided by 2 equals, uh, 125.66. And so that's the, that's the uh, circumference of the quarter circle. So I'll take that 125.66, and I multiply that by that width, right, of 250. Because you can imagine... If you had that curved surface, if you fold it out flat, right? And that curve there would make, it just make a rectangle, wouldn't it? So that's the area. 125.66 times 250 equals 31,415. 0.9, let's call it 416, shall we? 
Okay, and then times 200.93. Ooh, that's a big number. 6, 312, 402. And finally, we have 3416, 341, no, 31416, 31416 times 50.93 is 16 and three zeros, 1, 2, 3, and then 16.9 or 17, okay? All right, and finally, we have piece number three. Okay, piece number three up here at the top, okay? It's an area. It's not an arc. We're not looking at it from a side view this time. So in the Y, this is an area. And the area is 4R over 3 pi. That's where the centroid of a semicircular area is. And that equation there comes from the back of the book, okay? So that's a book, uh, I call them, I call them look em ups okay? You can find that in the back of your book, okay? I just happen to know it because I use it a lot, right? So the centroid is 4R over 3 pi. Let's see, 4 times 125 uh, divided by 3 equals divided by pi equals 53.05. Okay, so this is 53.05. Now, where is that? That's just here, isn't it? Again, I got to go from down at the bottom. So to get there, I got to go 150 plus 80, that's 230, and then another 53.05. So that's going to be at 283.05. Wow. And then Z-bar, how much in the Z-direction is that guy? Well, he's in the XY plane. So Z-bar for him is zero, okay? And then, of course, the area of that, that's pi r squared. Uh, but divided by 2, isn't it? So pi times a 125 squared equals divided by 2 equals 24,544. 24,544. Okay. Ooh, times 0. I got that one. Okay. And then times 283.05. Is uh, ooh, big number again, six nine forty seven zero ninety two. Okay, all right, so here we go. Remember that y bar is equal to um, the sum of the y a's over the sum of the a's, and z bar is equal to the sum of the z a's over the sum of the a's, okay? So the sum of the a's is going to come from this column here, isn't it? So 42,500 plus 31,415, 16, 16, plus 24,544 equals 98,460, okay? 98,460. 98, 460. Okay. And then the sum of the YAs will come from this column. So 3, 187.5 plus 6, 312, 402 plus 6, 947.092 equals, whoa, 1. Six, four, four, six, nine, nine, four. Okay, that goes here. Sixteen million four hundred and forty-six thousand nine hundred and ninety-four. So that number divided by ninety-eight four sixty equals one sixty-seven millimeters. Okay. And then the last one down there is going to be the sum of that last column. So 1, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 1, 6, 0, 0, 0, 1, 7, uh, equals 3, 3, 
one, two, three, one, seven. So 3.3 million, right? Three, three, zero, 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 one, seven, divided by 98,460 equals 33.5. Okay, so there's your Y bar and your Z bar. There's Y bar, Z bar, and of course X bar over here. We already knew that before we ever got started. Okay, so that's centroids by composite shapes. I hope this helps and I hope you do well on your test. All right, stay tuned for the next video.